Okay, so I just want to just uh, share a little bit about, um, uh, just want to talk a little bit about the power of God. And, um, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was, while I was away, I was just looking at certain things there, and I, and I was looking at God as the creator and the tremendous power that it would take to... Uh, <clears throat> well, what got me started was, was that, you know, the power of the resurrection. What sort of power would it require to raise someone from the dead? You know, and you think of the power of God and, and uh, you know, that... Uh, just, just turn with me to Ephesians for a minute. I'll, just re I'll read a couple of verses here that are well known to you all. <clears throat> So I'm reading from Ephesians uh, chapter 1, and I'll start reading at verses uh, maybe 17, just to give us a little bit of background. Now let's go to 15. So this is uh, Paul praying for the uh, Ephesian church, that they would be filled with wisdom and understanding of God. Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you. So Paul is praying for them, making mention of you in my prayers, what, what about? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So he, he's praying that God would give them greater understanding of who he is and what he can do. Uh, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory, and the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, normally we always talk about an, we've got an inheritance in heaven. But here in this case, Paul's talking that God has an inheritance in you. And let's face it, folks. God has invested a lot in you. Hasn't he? He's invested a lot in you. He gave us his son. He's invested so much in you. <clears throat> so then it goes on and says, verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working, working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly power. What an amazing thing. This, this tremendous power <clears throat> that is working in us, mighty power that works within us, you, me, uh, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of all, which all in all fills all. So the mighty power, the exceedingly mighty power that works within us, the Holy Spirit, is within you, isn't he? He is that power. You know, I find that amazing, that, you know, that the power that raised Jesus from the dead is within us. The same source of that power. You know, if you go over to Indonesia and you talk, get around some of the places there, not uncommon to hear testimonies of someone who's been raised from the dead. Not uncommon. I'm not saying it's happening every week or anything like that, but, but it's not uncommon. A lot of people, mighty things are happening in the world's largest Muslim population. God is demonstrating his power. He's demonstrating his authority. And I'll tell you, Muslims are queuing up to get into the kingdom of God. Isn't that incredible? World's largest Muslim population. Things are happening in Indonesia, I tell you, it's just amazing. And when you hear some of the testimonies of people, you think, wow, that's incredible. That's, this is acts, acts, some, acts stories and testimonies, amazing things. So God is working. And I just want to just talk about uh, the power, uh, first of all. Paul is just praying that you know, God would give them a greater understanding. And... Uh, so three things here that he wants them to understand. What is the hope to which he has called you? Okay, well, we, that's, that's a certain hope. Number two, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints that he has in you? That's a mighty thing. And then thirdly, I just want to maybe talk a little bit about this. What is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us 
the believer, according to the working of his mighty power in your life and in my life. That same power, that source of power, the Holy Spirit, lives within you. What an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. I'm telling you this because so often we will just, well, that's all right for them, but that's not really for me. Surely I wouldn't have that same power that Jesus had. Well, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you it is. The same Holy Spirit that empowered Jesus Christ to do all the miraculous things he did resides in you. And if we go from the book of, of, of Matthew right through the four Gospels and we step in to the book of Acts, after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, what? You shall what? Be my witnesses. After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He doesn't send you out to do something, but first of all, he empowers you to do what he wants you to do. Wonderful thing. He fills you with this Holy Spirit. After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, he's going to empower and send you out to be his witnesses. Whatever that may be, whether you pray for somebody, whether you share a testimony, whether you preach, you are a witness to the mighty power of God in your life. And I just want to encourage you, you know, I was uh, thinking about the power and so forth, and I, I was just looking at certain things. And, uh, you know, you look, you look at the, the solar system, and I, I was reading the other day that the, the, the astronomers reckon, I reckon there's about 100 billion stars in our galaxy. 100 billion stars in our galaxy. That's just our, that's just our galaxy, not another galaxy that's way out there, but our galaxy. And, and then, you, then you read in Psalm that God has named them all and hasn't forgotten one of them. Isn't that incredible? That's your God. That's our God. That's our Heavenly Father. He has named them all and He hasn't forgotten one of them. Wow. That, that's power. That's, to me, that's power. Never mind the raising of Lazarus. That's power. Incredible power. And so I'm, I'm trying to encourage you. That very power resides within you. It's the Holy Spirit that has transformed your lives. That's why you're here. And you are being transformed while you're here through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God working inside of you, doing something, shaping you, preparing you. Who knows at this stage what for? Some of you already know. Some of you don't know. What a tremendous future you have. What an incredible, incredible gift to have the power of God residing within you. The Holy Spirit. The Creator. God speaks and things happen. God speaks and something happens. Wow. I love that. God said, let there be what? Light, and there was light. Something for the day, something for the night. Jesus said to Jairus' his daughter, arise. What a powerful word that is. Arise. Power. That's power. Now, you know, we tend to think, well, that's just for the book of Acts, or that's for maybe India or Indonesia, but this is New Zealand here. Yeah, we've got to wake up, folks. New Zealand is very important to God, just like India is, like any other places. God loves this little nation of ours, and he wants to see the people in this land touched by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit resides within you. He is in you. And he is there. He is the source of that power. And so I just want to encourage you ju just to, to look beyond uh, where you are at now. Lord, what have you got for me? What, what are you planning for me? Think big. Think big stuff. You know, I look back, you know, when I first came into ministry, <coughs> and I'd hear sermons like that, and I'd think, oh, yeah, well, that's okay for you to say all that. <coughs> but, you know... 
After a while, yeah, he was right. He was right, that guy, or these guys that spoke. I've seen some tremendous mighty things happen. And God wants to use you to do exactly the same. You, you should pray and believe God for the miraculous. Why not? He, he lives within you. The source of that miracle is living there in you. He wants to move you out of the, oh, that's the wrong word, not complacency. He wants to leave you out of that unbelief into something that will bring honor and glory to his name. The same Holy Spirit. Okay, so let's just have a look at one or two of these things here. <clears throat> uh, talking about the power of God. Matthew 9, 6 says, That you may know the Son of Man hath power. Matthew 9, 6. Let's give you one or two verses here. Revelations 19, 6. God is omnipotent. It's the only time that's mentioned in the Bible. God is omnipotent. Revelations. In other words, God is what? All powerful. All powerful. Everything. Okay. <clears throat> I'll give you one or two others. Psalm 62.11. 62.11. Psalm. That power belongs to God. That's interesting. Power belongs to God. But he's put the source of power into you and me. That's what I like about it. You have that source there. Nahum. Verse 1. Uh, sorry, chapter 1, verse 3. The Lord is great in power. Isaiah 26, 4. Isaiah 26, 4. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is everlasting strength. Wow, what an amazing... Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is everlasting... When you fail, when you fall down, He hasn't changed. He's still the same mighty, powerful God. All strength. <clears throat> so, what is this great power like? That's the question I ask. <clears throat> verse 20. We're reading out of Ephesians. Okay, let's do it. Let's read verse 20. What is it like? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. That's what it's like. What's this power like? Okay, there it is right there, the first thing. When he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him in the right hand of the Heavenly Father. In the 70 places, okay? So that's the first thing that it's like. <clears throat> the second thing, number two, the power towards us is like the great might that God worked when he seated Christ at the right hand of God. Verses 20. So this power towards us is like the great power that God worked when he seated Christ at the right hand in heavenly places. <clears throat> the third thing, verses 21, the third power towards us now is like the great might that God worked when he exalted Christ far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but also the age to come. That's what that power is like. The power towards you is the same as that great power when God exalted Christ to the right hand. And the fourth thing, the great power when God put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. Wow. Isn't that incredible? Great power. Great power. And fifthly and lastly of these things, I'll come to some other things here in a minute. Verses 23. The great power when he made the church his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Great power. So just to have a look at what has been achieved by the mighty power of God. The first one, when he raised... Christ from the dead. You can write Hebrews 12, uh, Hebrews 2, 14. Okay? So the first thing, the enemy, death has been defeated. That's the first wonderful thing. Death could not hold him down. 
the mighty power of God. I can just imagine, you know, there's Christ in the grave, tombstone covered, disciples weeping and crying, three days and three nights. My son, time to arise. Boom. Amazing, isn't it? Time to arise. Bush. One word spoken from the Father. Well, the Bible doesn't say that. We know they, when they rolled the stone, when the stole was rolled away, the tomb was empty. Something miraculous had happened. Something mighty had happened. Okay? So, the first thing that we see <coughs> of these things, with the mighty power of God, Jesus raised from the dead. Death has been defeated. Ephesians 2.5. Death is swallowed up in victory. Wow. This power has raised us spiritually from the dead and given us life and faith. Oops, a daisy. It's coming alive. <laughs> right. <clears throat> okay, so the first, the first thing, result we see, we see this, is that Jesus was raised from the dead enemy, the enemy of all mankind. The great fear, when you go over to Asian places, the great fear is always the same. It's death, because they don't know what is going to happen. That's why the good news of Jesus Christ is so powerful in Asian countries. Because Christianity, Christ brings hope. They have no idea they do all sorts of things. They, they, they do oh, incredible things, depending on what you are, whether you're Islamic or Buddhist or whatever you may be. They do try it, all sorts of efforts and things so that they might indeed have eternal life. But it only comes through one source, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, you know, it's, we hold a, if I could use this word, we hold a trump card. Jesus Christ, raised from the dead. Death does not have any fear in us anymore. We don't have to die worrying about dying because we know when God calls us home, we're going to be with him forever and forever. And you know, sometimes we often think as young people, well, I wouldn't want to die like this. I wouldn't want to die like that. <clears throat> Let me just say this to you. If you really believe that God is involved in your life, do you believe that? Do you really believe that God's involved in your life? So, okay, so if something happened and you died in a car accident? <clears throat> My father was um, going off to a meeting in Indonesia. He would have been in his, he would, would have been 64 at the peak of his ministry. You remember him, don't you, Des? Yeah. Powerful preacher, great missionary, raised up a tremendous work in Indonesia, which is just covered the Indonesia with all sorts of preachers. Thousands come out of that Bible school. Incredible. <clears throat> Never expected. All of a sudden, boom. Car hit a tree. Dad was gone. And when I got that news, I, was, I'd, I had been with my parents about two months prior to that, listening to my father talk about the, the vision for the school and this and this and all of these things. And then when I heard that news... I was so saddened. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Now it's your turn. And I look back and I think, wow, you arranged that visitation with my parents, listening to my father, the vision for the school, all that he had. God knew exactly what he was doing. He always does, of course. Sometimes we don't understand it, but he always knows what he's doing. So, you know... <clears throat> Yeah, death doesn't, doesn't alter things for us. <laughs> Paul said, well, it's, yeah, death is gain as far as he was concerned. And I, I suppose I can understand that as well. Although I'm not ready to go yet. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the next thing here, okay? So the first thing, raise Christ from the dead. The enemy, death, has been defeated. Number two, God seated Jesus at his right hand. Now, the wonderful thing about that is, chapter 2, verses 16, let's just have a little read there. 
chapter 2, verse 16. And this is what it says. Uh, oh, I'm on the wrong one. Uh, verse 16. All right, it says this. That he might reconcile them both to God in one holy through the cross. Oh, no, no, that's not what I'm looking for. What am I looking at here? Two, sorry, sorry, sorry. Two, six, not 16. That's more like it. Okay. <clears throat> and raised us up together and made us, what? Sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay. We know that's our position. And yes, experientially, we're, we're down here. But that's a powerful position to be in. You've got to understand that. You've got to move and understand that you're in a powerful position. Seated with Christ at the right hand of the Father. Now remember, when he talks about the right hand, it's not talking of a lesser degree. It talks about an equal degree of that which is on your right hand. Are you with me here? Jesus is not sitting at the right hand of the Father as second. He is exactly the same in power with God. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Sometimes we don't live like that. Sometimes we live like we're constantly struggling. But you are in a, you, you are in a position of power and authority, seated at the right hand of God. And then if we go down to the third part, Verses 21. Let me just read verse 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. Wow. God set Jesus over all powers, all demonic powers, all powers, principalities in the heavenlies. God has seated him above all of those things. It says in Colossians 2.15, at the cross, God disarmed principalities and powers, all de demons, devils, all, push them all aside. Raise Christ above all of that, okay? So God said, we are with him. All these things are under us. We need to live like we are in charge, not like we're being bullied by some demonic power. Live like you are seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all demonic powers and authorities in the heavenlies, okay? That's how God wants you to live. He wants you, he set Jesus over all demonic power. You are in him, part of the body. Act like that. Okay, so then the verse, let's go to verse 22. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things, the church. God made Jesus head over all things. All right? He's the head of the church. He's our leader. He's our king. He's our savior. He's our friend. He's over everything. He's over all humanity. He's over all governments. He's over everything. Everything that you can think of. He's over it all. History, religion, whatever. Our Lord and Savior is over every other thing. God made him head over all things. Wow. That's incredible, isn't it? We know that, we know that Jesus is all-powerful. But he's over everything. Every demonic power totally submits to him. I always think of the, when he went across to the other side of the Gadarenes there. And the two, one, one, one writer will say, one demonic man, and one writer will say, the two demonic came running down when they saw him. And what did they do? They bowed down before him. Why have you come? What do you, what do you, why have you come before your time? They recognize the Lord Jesus Christ. We know who you are. Isn't that incredible? Demons know who Jesus is. In fact, I think sometimes they know who him is better, better than we know him. They know exactly who Jesus is. And why have you come before our time? Isn't it amazing? They know more about the end times than we do. Demon spirits. Incredible. 
And so I just want to encourage you. Get truth into your spirit. Live and believe what you read in the Bible. Sometimes you think, oh, that's not really me, or I haven't got that far yet. <clears throat> Look, the Holy Spirit, the power of God resides within you. You are seated with, 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 with Christ at the right hand of God. All things are under you. We need to live our life and believe what the Bible teaches us and, and, and begin to, 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 to move in authority when we pray with authority. Oh, well, you know, it never happens when I pray. Believe. Now, I know and understand that we are at different levels and we are growing and, and maturing in some of these areas. But I just want to encourage you to believe. Believe for bigger things. Believe for things to happen in your life. Because God wants to use you little by little. And our fifth point, <clears throat> verses 23. Which is his body? Put all things, uh, that, which is the church. Which is his body? The fullness of him who fills all in all. What does it say? The fullness who fills all in all. Where God rules... We also rule. Okay? Where God rules, we are also. We are his body. He is the head. Where he rules, the body is there, ruling, in control of situations, all things under our feet. We have to live and believe exactly what Paul is writing to us here, okay? We are his body, the church. It is the physical presence on earth, the church of Jesus Christ, his body. Isn't that amazing? The physical, what you see, the church, you and I, part of that church is the physical evidence that Christ is working in the world today. And we talk about Indonesia and India and all these other places. New Zealand is just as important. Same God, same Holy Spirit living and ruling within us. <clears throat> the church is to be filled with Him, Christ, by the Holy Spirit. This is the power of God at work toward you now. That's what God is doing, working in your life. Sin and Satan have been defeated. Okay, yes, you still have to fight, you still fight the battles. But he's been defeated. That, that can never change. God has preempted him. Yes, he's still there. He's still operating. But he is a defeated enemy. And you just need to remind him of that. Because if you don't remind him, he'll usurp you. Remind him. You have been defeated at the cross. You are under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are his body. You're under us. It's a powerful message, isn't it? That's a powerful message. This Holy Spirit, the power of God, resides within you. I love it. I love it. How can we be defeated? You will always win. Oh, I know we have little setups, little setbacks and things, but you are a winner because Christ has won it for you. And we are in him. We rule with him. He is the head. We are the body. And remember, this body, the church of Jesus Christ, is critically important, you and me. doesn't matter where you're from. We belong to the church of Jesus Christ. You live and walk in victory. Man, incredible. That Holy Spirit power resides within you. You need to be reminded when you lay hands on somebody, when you speak to somebody, the Holy Spirit empowers you. After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be my witnesses. You shall be my witnesses. And that's what happened Jesus showed them how to do it in the four Gospels. And he said, now look, boys, I'm heading home to the Father. I'm going to empower you. Just wait here. I'm going to empower you with my Holy Spirit. In other words, I'm not going to send you out 
until I empower you. Just wait. Down came the Holy Spirit, empowered the church. And look what happened in the book of Acts. 30 years, they were missionaries here, there were missionaries there, things were happening all over the place. The power of God came to the church, and it has never left us. Because that same Holy Spirit that came on that day in Acts chapter 2 is the same Holy Spirit that lives in you, 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 and me. Wow. What an amazing power. Power of God resides within you.